Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome to a, a little bit of a direction I kind of want to go, especially with this video. Will it, will, will it be the future of the channel? I don't know. But uh, I kind of want to do something in uh, this video that uh, I've never really done before. So I don't know how well this is going to go through. But uh, I actually have a clock here that uh, my Tasmanian Devil Alarm Clock. It's clock. It's pretty special to me. This was a uh, this was bought in for me by uh, by uh, my parents way way back in the day. They both passed by now, but uh, I've had this for twenty five years, which is uh, something that still works. It works quite well. The only problem is it's not really holding time anymore. Uh, the time for some reason seems to zoom along. Like you can plug in in at twelve. And then an hour later, it can read like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, I think I know how to fix this. And I went ahead and bought a new capacitor for it. And uh, I'm just going to basically take my 25-year-old clock apart. I just want to see if I can bring something from my past back from the dead. Okay, as I said before, a problem I was having is you could set the clock for 1234, and about two minutes later, it's 1239. So uh, that definitely means we need to unplug this thing and take a closer look at it. Now, the plastic looks really good on this thing, and, uh, you know, it's about 25 years old, a little, little dirty, but if you see on the bottom, it does say it came out in 1995, so I've had this thing about 25 years. Now, if you also look closer at the sticker, it says West Clocks. West Clocks began as the United Clock Company back in December of 1885. Shortly after receiving their first patent, they went bankrupt. After licking their wounds for about two years, they rebranded themselves as the Western Clock Company, which went bankrupt yet again. A year later, they re reorganized themselves as the Western Clock Manufacturing Company, and after a decade, patented the Big Ben Alarm Clock and used the modern trademark of West Clocks. I think that's enough of a history lesson. Let's get back to the repair. All right. I see there's four screws that takes the back off, so uh, we're going to just grab a nice screwdriver and pull those screws out. And uh, a little bit of pulling gets the back off. We notice we got this odd piece of paper in here, which it's black on one side and white on the other, but uh, we'll figure out how that goes in later. Let's just put this aside for now. All right, looking at this, there's two screws holding the uh, LCD screen on. Of course, see, I'm trying to do this very gingerly because I don't want to do anything to ruin that screen. And then the uh, the black part, or the back part that keeps the buttons on, has to come out. Three screws do that, and the whole thing just kind of falls apart. Put the back aside, and look at that capacitor there that needs replacing. So, uh, trying to find where it solders in. Pull out the soldering iron. We can plug the thing in. Set it to the right temperature, and then uh, start desoldering. And uh, my soldering skills aren't the greatest. I haven't really done this since I was like nine. But after a little bit of work, the old capacitor comes off. You can take a closer look at it to make sure that uh, it's what needs to be redone. And I bought a new uh, pack of them. Strangely, a 10-pack is cheaper than a 5-pack. So just clean up the uh, the holes a little bit. Make sure that solder's gone. Slide the uh, the new capacitor in, and then resolder. Said not my strong suit soldering, but uh, I don't know. After a quick touch up, turn off the solder, snip off the legs, and slowly slide the whole contraption back together again. Give a nice satisfying click. All right, now putting the screws back in. Not a hard thing, kind of a boring thing to show. I should have cut some of this out, but eh, you guys won't judge me too harshly. Put the screws back in, trying to be careful again with the LCD screen. Try to find a spot for that paper, and then put the cover back on. Snap that into place, and then put the screws in. One, two, three, and four. Now, moment of truth, let's plug it in. Hey, I didn't break it. Oh my God. Thank God for small favors. Now, the first thing I want to do was go ahead and set it to 1253 and then see if at 1254 it switches over, which it does. Good. Let's wait for 1255 or 255. It does. Now let's try it 256. And it does. Sweet. Let's go back to me for the outro. Well, there you have it. One of my best friends is uh, back to life again. I wish I could do that with more, but shows my soldering skills are kind of okay, I guess. Uh, I didn't break them. <laughs>
So uh, that's a good thing. And that's the end of this video. So uh, like if you want to, comment if you got to, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.